Everybody. Uh, good evening should I say because um, I'm at Makin's Fishery today and uh, I've just been doing a feature um, for the Dino White Baits team and um, which hopefully you'll see uh, in the next few weeks um, if not earlier. Um, I had a lovely day's pole fishing um, but I've decided to stop on because I'm itching to give some new floats I've got to try. Um, now I've bought these floats, so there's there's no sort of tie in there. There's no sort of commercial thing there. I just dying to go, but I thought I'd show you um, what they are, and um, we'll see if they work today because this is their maiden voyage. So uh, if you watch my um, Boddington live match video, um, you'd have seen me using a, a waggler, which uh, um, I was calling a numpty waggler, which is this sort of big ugly thing. So uh, I've painted it white, and I've left the tip yellow over blue. Um, now, uh, I always wanted some smaller ones. I finally found a guy, a reliable guy, who's, uh, who's made me some in a smaller size. Um, some, a guy down in Devon. Um, and um, he's made them exactly to my spec. And it's these little beauties. Now they are, that's a five gram model there. RWC floats these are. So I say I've paid for them full wax, so I've not had any sort of special uh, concessions or anything for like this. And this video, it's nothing for them really, it's just purely me showing you something that um, I think is quite clever and quite cute. So uh, um, we all like something different, don't we? So that's a four gram, and let's look at this little dinky one. That's a little three gram. So um, lovely little floats. Um, he does them in normal colors, but I wanted them all white. Um, there's a very good reason for that. Um, I want the fish to investigate them. I think black is a terrible color for a float. Um, anglers that use white top kits that use black pole floats it makes no sense to me so uh, um, I think white is is um, less obtrusive than black but if a fish investigates anything white it often thinks it's red so if you imagine you've got a little uh, a little white waggler there a fish is going to come in not seen that before oh what's that is it a bubble is it a bit of fluff is it a bit of bread and then if obviously you've got a hook bait dangling below it often you nail them so and today on this venue we're on lake five today it's very very shallow um it's perfect for a shallow float so uh this style of pellet waggler absolutely love these pellet wagglers in four and five uh, four and six gram four gram especially but they're very very long if you compare that that's a four gram and that's a four gram now you tell me which ones are less obtrusive yes that's going to make a horrible sort of noise well i'm not it's not a horrible noise it's going to make a lovely plop i'm hoping um, nice for mugging and things and uh, and uh, that's uh, a longer waggler in the swim great for normal depths but this is very shallow it's probably three and a half foot down the middle um, certainly was on the pole line so um, so I'm hoping these little wagglers will work I'm not gonna say they're gonna work any better or any worse but we're gonna try and see what they do um, there's been a few fish mooching around but sod floor it's it's cloudy now and um, we've got a bit of rain um, it's just starting to spit and stuff so the fish have probably moved down and being later in the day they probably want to come into the edge now but all day they've been cruising out there and I've been itching to catch them on a waggler so we're going to have a little short session maybe an hour that's it see if we can catch on them and uh, show you a few other little tips and tricks as well that uh, I'm planning to do so it's out and out waggler job that's the rod we're going to use we've got a little aquas reel and it's the uh, Horizon Cart Waggler 11 foot now I've been a massive advocate of 12 foot um, cart waggler rods for a very very long time I did some coaching with a guy who was using this rod in 11 foot and uh, and I hadn't used it at that time. I thought, crikey, that's a lovely little rod. And ever since, this has been my go-to um, pellet waggler rod, for, initially for mugging carp, um, casting at fish beyond pole range, but actually it's my, for a venue like this, I actually prefer this rod now to uh, my old 12 foot. So I never thought I'd say that, but, so the 12 foots I generally stick to for uh, Pollowing deeper venues like that or big chucks like um, uh, Boddington or something like that but on a nice little venue like this I, I've just ordered another one actually so these 11 foot horizon cart waggers absolutely beautiful rods god knows what I was thinking never trying these sooner so uh, so anyway that's what we're going to use today 
perfectly matched with these little dinky flakes. Right, today's session couldn't be simpler in terms of the bait and tackle. I've just got my waggler rod and a bag of 8mm swim stims, which is the, uh, the fishery pellets here. Uh, just a hard green uh, fishery pellet. And uh, I've just I've, I've catapulted a few times on and off whilst I've been messing around. Let's feed the ducks over there at the moment. And we're just going to keep raining a few in. I've not had a cast yet. I've set the waggler up. I've not cast it, I've just dropped it in front of me, so I don't even know how far they're going to go yet. But uh, I'll keep raining it in. Um, as far as baits go, I'll either put, match the hatch with one of these, uh, with one of these um, eight mils, or we've got some yellow washers, usually in the seven mil. Catch a lot of fish on those. And I've also picked out some old white, um, I don't even know, I um, can't even say where these come from really, but they're, um, quite a big white uh, in like an 8 mil so it's probably about a 7 mil size and that's probably almost an 11 mil size but we've got those to try as well and then the floats just give them a little tub like that so uh, that's it I've, oh I've got the I've got my original waggles as well which I'm going to try I dare say later on as well just to see what the difference is in casting and everything but I just want to give I know these work but I just want to see how well these casts and sit and the fish will come to them like I expect so uh, let's keep it raining in Ducks are all there. The ducks might have a go at the float, that's the only other issue, and now I'm the only one on the lake. I think there's a load of pleasure hangs around to my left, but I'm the only one in this little bowl, so uh, and I'm the only one that's probably feeding anyway, so so uh, it could be fun. So uh, I've got a 12 inch hook length on it. I'll just show you what the setup is for now. We can go even shorter, but uh, to start with, I've just got it set on a, a float length like that. I've got a three grammar on to start with. And then that's uh, 16 matrix carp riggers uh, with a band, 018 power micron, and, uh, and that's it, good to go. Let's see how far this one casts. I'll start the little in, it's only a little chuck. Um, worryingly, there's less and less fish moving around now than there was. Ducks have come from nowhere, <laughs> and they're dive bombing. Oh. Oh, I'll help him actually engage the bail arm properly. So uh, let's see how far this goes. Oh yeah, perfect. Plop. <laughs> Duck went straight for that, thinking it's a uh, it's a bit of prey. <laughs> Soon realised it wasn't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is it a skimmer or a carp? <laughs> I can honestly say. That is my first ever cast with these float. God's ominous truth. I don't know what it is. It's not doing a lot. It's got to be a car. It's funny though, I've stopped seeing them cruising around like they have been all day. Oh, he's off. Oh, that would have been awesome. Has he broke me? No, he's not broke me. <laughs> Big swirl out there where he's come off. That would have been awesome, wouldn't it? That's potentially come up for the float and foul up to the hook, so uh, it might already be a case of going even shallower. <laughs> oh well, that would have been perfect, wouldn't it? It's been a few times. Ducks have disappeared. Well, it actually doesn't make as much noise as I thought as well, which is good. I don't want it to go in like a bag of spanners. So we'll keep casting and casting and casting and see if it'll go under. Fish or fish on first drop is unbelievable. It's a shame it didn't stay on. Just so it just crashed to my right. Now people worry you can't see that white tip, but um, I find you can see white big white tip like that in any sort of condition, white water and coloured water, so it doesn't bother me too much. If I was struggling I'd potentially just colour the very top of it black, but um, I don't want any fluorescent light. These fish must see it all the time. So we're going to feed, cast. Oh, 
I'd have loved that fish to stay on. It's gone straight for it again. No diving at all with these wagglers, they just go dunk and they stay where they are. Just like the bigger one I had. I've been dying having them in these smaller sizes. They don't seem to reel in as clumsily or anything. As well, that big one does reel in clumsily, but that's not making too much of a noise. I do think because it's a really heavy buoyant float, the fish will bolt against it. And I'm hoping it'll be a really good mugging waggler as well. So I'm just going to go at it then without me. Okay. It's kind of swirled about a metre to the right. A few casts, a few feeds. Oh! <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm just going to have a few casts and a few feeds without talking. That's Nick me pellet. How dare you? Got a, I'm already changing, it's like me already being funny. I'm going to put a 7 mil washer on. Just make sure it sinks, yeah. Well, that's, that was a positive sign, that's a good bite that. This is a sort of float, sort of method, sort of tactic. I like to keep up my sleeve, I suppose. But as I'm getting older, I'm giving more and more stuff away. <laughs> you know, uh, I used to be quite secretive, I suppose. We all, we, I was taught to be quite secretive as a kid, and even at club level. Little code words for secret baits and that between my dad and myself and mates and stuff. But uh, I quite like giving things away now. Trish has been quite kind to me, I've won quite a few things. So uh, yes, we're all one and edge. Ooh, that went for the float. <laughs> so I'm gonna have another cast and then I'm gonna shorten the hook link. And uh, just see. So far I've had a swirl at the float. Bear in mind I've only just started fishing, so I'm not expecting instant action anyway. Lock that down. Let's put one of these white ones on, a big white one. We've got a couple of swells at the float. Great big tail just came up. I think they're actually down on the bottom now. Time of day, they'll be down feeding. Let's see if we can get them up competing. Start on the smallest float. Don't think I need to go any, uh, any heavier because it's only a little chuck. I could just give it a big one there just to see how far it can go. No problem at all with that. Ooh, some of four legs just scurried behind me. <laughs> Few more casts than I'd like to go around, but it has gone round. Bad fish. Quite small males in this place, quite lean fish, a lot of them. Certainly ones I've been catching today on the pole. So you will miss bites. The males are very, very small. I always say makings fish have small males. This looks just like the ones we've been catching. Oh, sucking my cut job too much. Bad fish. See four pound, a bit more, and yeah, four pound. Very long, lean things there. They are hard to catch sometimes. <laughs> well, I've just seen an orange ghosty. Sure, it's circled and circled and circled, and I've had three plops at it, and he's. 
reeled it in, flopped it three times, thinking, well, he's never going to have it, and all of a sudden he's gone straight for it. And I've got it. Oh, he's off. No, he was in the mouth as well. Oh, dear. Bad angling. Well, that was interesting. I uh, I lost that ghosty. A few more casts. No, nothing, no swirls at the float or anything. So I push it down to sort of a normal depth, say 18 inch. It's on first drop, drop. Similar size fish. So, what am I about 18 inches there now? No. 15 inch, not just on a normal 8 mil swim stem. Already getting a nice green hands from the pellets. Let's feed, see how long this takes to catch. Six pellets, twice. See right over the top. Look. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely time of day and I'm the only one here and everything, but that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Straight away. Try and turn the cameras and we'll try and get a, a fish on these as well for you to see. It was a little bit bigger, probably isn't. This rod is absolutely beautiful for... Oh, it's a ghosty. Oh, that's a nice fish. I like this one for cameras. Oh, my God. He's going to... He's not going to be camera shy. Beauty. These are the fish I've seen cruising around all day. They're hard to catch, so we'll just quickly feed while she's behaving. Get it primed. He's got a big head on him, but a little body. Alright, Mr. Ghosty. Quickly hold him up. Come on. Say hello to all your fans. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have much success with this. It's facing that way. Yeah, I didn't mind it that way. There you are, nice Ghosty. On my little white wagglers. Ghost wagglers, should we call them ghost wagglers? For ghost car. That's what I'm going to call them, ghost wagglers. I don't think anyone else has got that name of the ghost waggler. That's just come to me. Yeah. Get on the ghost waggler for the ghosties. And the ghost plopper. I'm open to suggestions for names for my waggler. I think they call them a dump, a dump tea on their on their website. But I'm going to call them ghost waggles. <laughs> right. Get this one in. Now I'll turn the cameras and let you see this happen. This is pretty good. Instant. Absolutely love pellet waggler fishing. Nice to do some it and it and it to work. Biggest fish so far. Again, very long. Any other fishery that'd be ten pound. It's probably six. It's a gorgeous job. Well, it proves you certainly don't need a fine insert to uh, hit these bites. <laughs> Right, I'm going to turn the cameras around and see if we can uh, 
get me actually catching a fish. Perfect, right, I've got it all lined up with my iPhone. I'm not going to use my expensive professional cameras today. I'll use some of my paid for jobs. I'm just going to use cheap and cheerful iPhones and GoPros. In. It's going to wobble about when I feed a bit. So, uh, there we go. There. A little bit to the right. Feeling a particularly tight amount. Pop that in. You got that? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> uh, did you get that? Instant. My God. Yes, it's time of day. Yes, I'm in this bowl by myself. But could you catch any quicker than that? I think the answer is no. Or hook fish in it, and that's another ghosty. I've hardly seen a ghosty today on the poggers. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, I've snapped my band off. Another nice ghosty. a resounding yes for do they work um, I've got green fingers but I've got a lovely white float and uh, what, what did we call them again ghost wagglers so uh, I'm gonna call that my little ghost waggler or my ghost popper or something like that. ghost popper Popper's quite nice isn't it so anyway comment below to see what you think they should be called I quite like ghost waggler any if anyone's got anything better than that then uh, we'll give them a go and uh, that's what I'll coin them. But um, all I can say is thanks to RWC folks for making those for me. Um, I'm sure you'll get inundated for inquiries for them now. So uh, I like them in white. I, I know he does them with yellow and normal tops and everything. And I think he calls them a dump tea, dump tea waggler, something like that. So, uh, but uh, they're Johnny Arthur's ghost wagglers. I'm very, very happy with that session. And so was that carp there. <laughs> Thank you.